Hello guys, welcome back everyone. So today we will be going to discuss the further videos related to the polity. So in the previous lecture, as I told you, is the foundational classes or foundational you know videos in that we have discussed very clearly what exactly is about the parliament. In India, if I ask you the question who will be the decision making body in India, the answer should be the parliament. Similarly, in the state, who will be the decision making body in the state? The answer should be legislature. So the decision making body in the state is legislature, that is state legislature. Similarly, the decision making body in India is nothing but parliament. So as I told you with a small example, taking the company XYZ, if the company belongs to XYZ, the decisions will also be taken by the XYZ. Similarly, as the country belongs to Indians, the decisions with respect to India should also be made by the Indians itself. That is why the decision making body in India is parliament. Why? Because the representatives of Indians are present in the parliament. That is why any law will be made only by the parliament. So just by keeping this concept in mind and when I start the topic called as parliament, you will understand each and every concept in a very perfect manner. So now let's continue the further class. Okay. So I am just repeating. So we discussed that what is the constitution? What is the constitution? And it consists of articles and it consists of parts. What is the numbered parts? What is the countable parts? It also consists of schedules. It also consists of schedules. And we also discussed the process called as amendment. What is the process for the amendment etc. So, uh, you know, we didn't discuss the process for the amendment, but we have discussed the importance of the amendment. Okay. So then after this, so the after discussing all these things, we have also discussed that India is a federal state. India is a what? Federal state. So whenever you listen to this word federal state, the first thing that you should keep in mind is nothing but definitely they are going to be a division of powers. Definitely they are going to be a division of powers, division of powers, division of powers. The question can be asked in which schedule of the Indian constitution the division of powers is mentioned very clearly. So the division of powers in Indian constitution is present in the seventh schedule. That is why in the seventh schedule you will discuss that federation, federation is present in the seventh schedule of the Indian constitution. The opposite concept to the federal state is nothing but the unitary where all the powers will be resting in one government and so federal means there will be two governments where the power will be shared between two things in India there is a central government and there is a state government central government and also state government so whatever the structure is there at the center the same structure will also be present at the state as I told you there will be parliament there will be parliament there will be state legislature in the state. At the level of center, if we go on discussing, there will be National Human Rights Commission. At the level of center, there will be National Human Rights Commission. And at the level of state, there will be State Human Rights Commission. State Human Rights Commission at the level of state. At the level of center, you will be having Union Public Service Commission. At the level of state, we will be having state public service commission at the level of center will be having central election commission at the level of state will be having state election commission the level of center will be having central information commission at the level of state will be having state information commission as I told you there will be a prime minister at the center and there will be a chief minister at the state okay so this is the manner once we go on discussing with respect to aspects in the center, we will also discuss with respect to aspects at the level of state. And the next, what are we going to discuss? The next important topic that we are going to discuss is nothing but, see, how come the modern administration came into the existence? How come modern administration came into existence? Modern administration. So, how come or when does this modern administration came into existence? This is the first thing you need to keep in mind. 
So why does or how does this modern administration came into existence? For suppose, if I ask you, previously there used to be somebody who is called as the decision maker. So who will be the decision maker in the ancient days or else in the medieval days? The decision maker in the ancient days and also in the medieval days are mostly the kings. Kings used to be the decision maker. So that means kings used to take decisions. So taking decisions, taking decisions indirectly means law making. Indirectly means law making. Taking decisions indirectly means law making. Okay. So decisions, law making. Previously, kings used to take decisions and at the same time, they are called as the law makers. They are called as the law makers. So, whatever the decision is taken by the king, whatever the law is made or prepared by the king, that will be implemented by somebody. So, implemented by somebody. This one is called as the implementation. Kings will be implementing the laws. So, as the king is going to implement the laws, we will call that executing the laws. We will call that executing the laws. Means, the king himself will execute or else we will call it as a executing. So, the king will be taking the decision and the king will be implementing the decision which is called as the executing. And if there is any if there is any problem with respect to implementation or if any problem with respect to decision, adjudication. So, adjudication is nothing but, you know, uh, giving the judgment. So, giving the judgment. The judgment will would also be given by the king himself. So, king is making the laws. Means, for suppose, uh, whatever the rules and regulations that should be there in the kingdom, the rules and regulations will be framed by the king. So, those rules and regulations should be implemented by some organ. So, in those days, the implementing body or implementing organ is king himself. And the same king himself used to adjudicate the disputes. So, while making the laws, any things happening, while implementing the laws, any negative things happen, the king himself used to give the judgment, which is called as an adjudicating part. So, but if anything wrong happens, with respect to lawmaking, with respect to execution or with respect to judgment. So, the people use it to go towards whom? So, the people go, use it to go or people use it to visit the kings themselves. So, when the people are coming in front of the king and if the people are saying that, Sir, uh, the rule which you have made, so and so rule is so disastrous, it is creating lot of problems for us. So, please make changes to the rules. That is the first thing or else the rule is perfect but the rule is not getting implemented in a perfect manner. Then the people will approach the king. Sir, whatever the implementation process is there with respect to rules and regulations that is not going in a perfect manner. So, please take action on them. So, that is the thing. So, when all the thing, so with respect to problems in law making, with respect to problems in execution, they will be going to the king themselves. So, king you, they himself used to give the judgment. If the king is good, well versed, he will understand the problems of the people. He will understand the problems of the people and he will give a very good solution. Yes or no? So, this is the situation. But listen guys, kings will not be good every time. Every kingdom, even the greatest kingdom you can see, that kingdom has become to an end. For suppose, Mauryas, which was once considered as the greatest dynasty or empire, it came to an end at a certain point of time. Guptas, which is considered as the greatest kingdom, it also came to an end. Harsha's dynasty, that came to an end. Cholas, Pandyas, Pallavas, thereafter Mughals. So, again after Aurangzeb, that has become completely weaker. So, even, you know, you can take the example of Marathas, that has also become weaker. So, every time we can't say the king is every time perfect. So, if the king is not perfect, the ultimate sufferers are the people because when the rules are not perfect, when the people are questioning, king is not listening. If the rules are not implementing properly, king is not listening properly and they are approaching only directly towards the sun, so directly towards the king, but the king is not listening to them properly and here, this is where the problem is lying. So, the king is good, yes, people will have a very good solution, but the king is not good. 
so the people may not get a very good solution so there comes the modern administration in this modern administration a new concept came into existence which is nothing but division of powers this division of powers is different from the division of powers which you have which we have discussed in the seventh schedule rather than calling it as a division of powers i'll call that as a theory of i'll call that as a theory of separation of theory of separation of powers theory of separation of powers theory of separation of powers okay so theory of separation of powers that means instead of keeping all the powers in a single hand like in the previous example we discussed that law making executing and also judgmental functions everything was kept in a single person's hand that is why that was been completely misused or that is not at all a very big use to the people so instead of giving or keeping all the powers in a single hand there came the concept called as theory of separation of powers this question was asked previously in a group 2 examination so who is the profounder of the theory of separation of powers so french philosopher french philosopher whose name is nothing but montesquieu french philosopher montesquieu so this french philosopher montesquieu is the person behind theory of separation of powers french philosopher montesquieu the person behind theory of separation of powers okay so then what did he say so what did he spoke about theory of separation of powers so as we discussed yes we are having something called as legislature legislative there is something called as legislative and there is another thing which is called as executive legislative executive and also judiciary legislature executive and also judiciary so the modern definition to this subject polity is nothing but government polity is nothing but study of a government each and every government will be having three important organs that is legislature executive and judiciary same functions which used to be performed by the kings in the uh, old indies that is in the ancient days or in the medieval days but in the modern the administration have been changed so what is the legislature in india so who will come under the legislative function or who are legislatures in india legislative means law making legislating means law making as i said you who will be law making in this country that is nothing but the parliament so parliament is the law maker in the country see guys whenever i use this word law law sometimes the students will connect this word law with the you know judicial connotation means that is related to the courts high court supreme court or lower court so people will think like that so the law is different courts will adjudicate the law but courts will never prepare the law so this is what the people will be having a belief that the law makers are nothing but the courts it's not the thing it is completely wrong the law makers are nothing but the parliament but the law adjudication will be done by the courts so law maker is nothing but the parliament so here parliament consists of what in generally lok sabha plus rajya sabha so these are the people who will be behind the law making process in generally if the question is asked what exactly is the parliament all about so then according to article 79 there will be a president there will be a rajya sabha and there will be a lok sabha so this combination is called as nothing but parliament so lok sabha plus rajya sabha parliament so this is the law making and the next thing is nothing but the executive functions so executing means that is nothing but as i told you implementing implementing executing this is nothing but implementing so what will be present in this execution means who will be present as the executive so who will be present as executive means president of india so president is part of an executive followed by vice president thereafter prime minister thereafter council of ministers and attorney general and attorney general attorney general see guys this is an important thing which you people should keep in mind this is an important thing 
which you people should keep in mind because president vice president prime minister council of ministers and attorney general so who comes under executive is a question mark who comes under the legislature is a question mark you people need to keep in mind so the parliament is a legislature and whatever the parliament is making the laws for suppose if i say if the parliament is making some agricultural related laws that will be implemented on the name of the president but that will be actually implemented by the agricultural minister if the parliament is giving approval to purchase certain aircrafts or jets you know you know jet crafts or aircrafts or some submarines from russia or from united states of america that will be implemented by our defense minister if india want to enter into agreement with any other country external affairs minister will come into force if the parliament is making a law saying that in india we have to expand the infrastructure we have to even more invest on the roadways so who will construct the means who will be monitoring the construction of this roadways golden quadrilateral quadrilateral everything so that will be by national highway ministry or else if any new law is made with respect to aviation aviation sector so aviation minister will be taking place if anything is related to the information technology if it bill something is passed by the parliament that will be implemented by the it minister similarly there will be a law minister there will be n various number of ministers so the whatever the parliament is making the laws this ministers will be implementing them but that will be on the name of the president of india that is why execution will be done combinedly by the president vice president prime minister council of ministers and also attorney general and the next judiciary so whenever whenever if you find any problem if any problem arises between the parliament or executive that can be solution will be given by something called as a supreme court so this supreme court so this supreme court will be giving the solution so this supreme court will give the solution supreme court will be giving the solution if parliament is making any law then whether the law is correct or not that will be judged by the supreme court similarly executives means president vice president prime minister council of ministers or attorney general whatever the role whatever the duty they are doing if it is not according to the mark then that will be questioned by who means that is nothing but the supreme court so you need to keep in mind guys see this is just an overview brief understanding about what are we going to study in the future aspects see this much elaboratively i am explaining the entire concepts polity then this understanding will only make you to fall in love with this subject polity this understanding only will make you to analyze each and every concept in the polity in a perfect manner so let us see in the previous session or else in the previous slide i told you theory of separation of powers somebody should legislate somebody should execute somebody should adjudicate at the same time there has to be checks and balances there has to be checks and balances so what is the meaning of this checks and balances what is the meaning of this checks and balances means whenever legislature is crossing their limits executives will keep a limit on them executives will keep a restriction on them whenever executive is crossing their limits then legislature will keep a limit on them similarly when both of them are crossing their limits judiciary will keep a check on them when judiciary is crossing their limits then these two organs will keep a check on judiciary this combination is called as theory of checks and balances so legislature will check the executive executive will check the judiciary judiciary will check the legislature and executive so by checking each and every one each and every person's role and they are bringing something called as the balance they are bringing something called as the balance so this is what called as theory of checks and balances one organ will check the performance of the other thing so that is why theory of separation of powers means legislative functions executive functions and judiciary functions thereafter so the duties will be uh, you know framed in such a manner there will be 
exactly checks and balances. So, let us discuss. So, how come the parliament will be controlled by executive and how come executive will be controlled by the parliament? How come both will be controlled by judiciary and how judiciary will be kept under control by this legislature and executive? We will be checking that. So, what is this? What is this we will be going to discuss? That is nothing but Lok Sabha. Lok Sabha, see, if Lok Sabha wants, they can keep a no confidence motion on the ruling party. Whenever Lok Sabha is passing a no confidence motion, this leads to end of Prime Minister and Council of Ministers. So, whenever Lok Sabha is passing a no confidence motion, whenever Lok Sabha is passing a no confidence motion, then Prime Minister and Council of Ministers will lose their power. In the same manner, whenever, whenever Prime Minister desires, whenever, means see, Lok Sabha is going to remove Prime Minister and Council of Ministers, that means Legislature is controlling executive. Yes or no? Legislature is continue, continue, you know, con, you know, uh, controlling executive. Similarly, when parliament wants, it can remove vice president with an effective majority. When parliament wants, it can remove who means president. When parliament wants, it can remove president. That means legislature are going to control the executive. So, and see, don't keep a question mark how the parliament will be removing the president, how the parliament will be removing the vice president, everything. These things we will be going to learn. So, this is the th these are the things which we will be going to learn in the further classes. So, how parliament will remove the president which is called as the impeachment, how parliament will remove the vice president and within the parliament Lok Sabha if it desires, it can remove prime minister and council of ministers. Even though the Attorney General, he is under the control of Prime Minister. So, this is how legislature will be controlled by the executive. Then, how executive will control the parliament? Let us discuss that. That is, President. President will start the sessions of the parliament. President will start the sessions of the parliament. And President will end the sessions of the parliament. That means, executive it is controlling the legislature. Yes or no? So, parliament is controlling president. Similarly, president is controlling the parliament. How come he is going to start the sessions of the parliament? He is going to end the sessions of the parliament. Okay? How he will start? What is the article related to that? We will be studying. And see guys, you people will be having lot many doubts. I am saying that each and every doubt of you will get clarified over the period of time. See, a person who wants to become an electrical engineer, so in the first day of the college itself, he won't learn how the electricity will be produced, how the electricity will be generated and how it will be transmitted. It is not discussed, right? It is a gradual process. In the first year, you will learn about basics of electrical engineering. Then after you will learn about DC machines, then after AC machines, then after solar energy or nuclear energy, everything. So, it is a regular process. You have to get through the basics. Then you will understand everything. So, here also in this polity, you might have heard many things in the news. But, we will be learning that in a gradual manner. So, that is why, so executive will be controlling the legislature. President will start the sessions, president will end the sessions. And on the advice of Prime Minister, upon the advice of Prime Minister, President can dissolve what? Lok Sabha. Upon the, see you may get confused, that is why I am requesting you to write this thing whenever I am saying. So, President, he can dissolve Lok Sabha in it. President, yappudante appudu, Lok Sabha nu complete ga, purti ga dissolve change. So, that is why it is said that Lok Sabha will be under President control. That means, executive as is going to control the parliament or legislature. So, this is how this both organs will be controlled. Similarly, whenever any mistake is happening, for suppose, as I told you, parliament is a law making organ. So, when the parliament is making a law, excuse me,
so when the parliament is making any law that law if it is any wrong things in the parliament for suppose you can see jammu kashmir's article 370 if article 370 has been repealed if article 370 has been repealed or else uh, you know the changes were made to the article 370 that means if you feel that is wrong if you feel that uh, removal of article 370 as discrimination then meer oka vivaksha laga bhaviste you can come directly to where supreme court you can approach to the supreme court similarly similarly whenever executive so whatever the law made by the parliament if the executive is not implementing them properly if the executive is not implementing them properly then obviously the executive actions can also be questioned where in the supreme court so legislature is controlled by the judiciary executive is also controlled by the judiciary so one organ is going to control the another organ then how come executive and legislature will control the judiciary we discussed that legislature and executive are going to control the judiciary but how this judiciary is going to control this two we will be discussing that see the judges of supreme court will be appointed by the president that means the appointment of judges of supreme court is in the hands of president who is an executive so judiciary is going to control the executive similarly so judiciary is under the control of executive similarly if we want to remove the judges of supreme court the judges of supreme court will be removed by the parliament through a special majority so the removal of the judges is under the control of parliament appointment of judges is under the control of executive so that means these two organs are controlled by the judiciary judiciary in turn is controlled by these two organs legislature and executive so this is the structure every government consists of three important organs legislature executive and judiciary so then what so uh, three important organs and there will be this whenever these three important organs are present will call that as a theory of separation of powers this theory of separation of powers should be present in such a manner that there has to be a clear cut checks and balances between them there has to be a clear cut checks and balances so how the checks are there prime minister and council of ministers will be checked by lok sabha and balanced similarly you know prime minister want he can dissolve the lok sabha any time through president he is checking the legislature and balancing that these two things if they does anything wrong judiciary will be questioning them so the two organs will be questioned by judiciary checked by judiciary similarly the judiciary will be questioned by executive and also legislature so this is called as a checks and balances came from the concept of montesquieu but in india this theory of separation of powers is not exactly separated there is not completely checks and balances in general what is the meaning of theory of separation of powers who is behind that what is checks and balances and how it is present in the indian scenario we have learned so in the future classes so in the future classes we will be studying about this parliament we will be studying about this lok sabha rajya sabha in the future classes we will be studying about the president vice president prime minister council of ministers attorney general we will be studying about all this people will be studying about all this people and we will also be studying about the supreme court so this is present in the syllabus so what are the powers of the parliament how it is controlling other two organs what are the who are executives so how this executive is going to control these two other organs and who are judiciary and see whenever we discuss about the executives there is a permanent executive and there is a temporary executives permanent executive and also temporary executive see permanent executive means who will come under the permanent executive that is nothing but you know the you know the people means the people who for which examination you are preparing for that is executive examination so the people the people working under in the range of group 2 and above are called as executive officers so they will be 
called as permanent executives. They will be called as permanent executives. And there are another people who are called as the temporary executives. So who will come under this temporary executive? This people, President, Vice President, Prime Minister, Council of Ministers, Attorney General. These people are called as the temporary executives. And these people are called as the temporary uh, people. Uh, you know, uh, because uh, political executives also. But permanent executive means government job holders. They will be there for a fixed tenure. They will be present for a fixed term and they will be continuing for the, uh, you know, uh, for the rest of the period. So that is why they are called as the permanent and these people are called as the temporary and they are also called as the political executives. So you need to understand what is the permanent executive, what is the temporary executive, what is the political executive. So permanent executive are nothing but the government job holders and for which we, means you people are aspiring for. Okay. Guys, understanding the concepts right, okay? So, you know, you will get familiar, you will get habituated with me in the further classes, okay? So, we'll know, we'll discuss most of the aspects, we'll discuss most of the aspects. So, uh, but uh, I feel because most of the times, students will feel, as I told you, polity as easy, but still they get very less marks because of the lack of this basic foundation. So, that is why I myself tried and researched so, how the students can understand the concepts in a very easy manner. So, that is why I frame this concept. Nobody, no faculty will start or else will give this much clear elaboration regarding the foundational concepts. But I am here, I am explaining you those foundational concepts in a perfect manner. Then, after this, as I told you, India is a federal state. Same, whatever the thing that is existing at the center, at the level of state also, that will be present. So, there will be legislature at the level of state and there will be executive at the level of state and there will be a judiciary. There will be a judiciary at the level of a state. Okay? At the level of a state also. So, just by comparing this one, just by comparing this one, now tell me who will be the lawmaking body. So, now tell me who will be the lawmaking body in the state? Who will be the lawmaking body in the state? Same like parliament, in the level of state there is somebody. That is nothing but, I will just change the pen. So that is nothing but state legislature. State legislature. So the lawmaking body, excuse me. So, the lawmaking body, I think this, so the lawmaking body at the level of state is nothing but state legislature. So, who will be present in the state legislature? That is nothing but assembly. So, who will be present at the level of state legislature? That is nothing but assembly. And who is present means nothing but council. So, there will be council at the level of state and there will be assembly at the level of state. Similarly, executive. Who will be present at the level of executive? So, that is nothing but same like a president. Who will be present in the state? As I told you, that is nothing but the governor. So, governor will be present in the state. So, thereafter the governor there will be chief minister. Governor will be there. Chief minister will be there. And there will be a state council of ministers. Council of Ministers will also be present at the center, at the level of state and same like Attorney General in the center, in state there will be an Advocate General. There will be an Advocate General in the state. So then who will be present in the judiciary? That is nothing but High Court. High Court will be present in the judiciary. So, so Lord, now let us consider how legislature, executive, judiciary are going to control themselves. Okay. See, guys, now you listen to this video, now you listen to these classes and just keep a note on the notes where you are writing, just keep a reminder or keep a reminder in your phone. After the completion of Supreme Court topic, after the completion of Supreme Court topic, come back to this video. So, after the completion of Supreme Court and High Court, come back to this video and 
then you can understand this entire structure you can understand this entire structure in a very beautiful manner in a very wonderful manner so if you understand this relation then you will have love with this polity in a very perfect manner so that will make you to get very good amount of marks in the examination so as i told you chief minister chief minister will give the advice and governor will dissolve the assembly anytime governor will dissolve the assembly anytime so how come this governor will dissolve the assembly anytime so that is nothing but how come the governor will dissolve the assembly anytime we will discuss this so means uh, you know in telangana state there is you know there is a you know in 2018 september uh, september 2018 so kcr has completely you know cancelled the assembly he has uh, dissolved the assembly and he went for the new elections so on the advice of cm governor will dissolve the assembly so even though the term is not completed but this assembly dissolving power will be in the hands of the governor but on the advice of chief minister so that means executives are controlling the legislature yes or no so yes similarly in assembly if they pass in assembly if they pass a no confidence motion in assembly if they pass a no confidence motion then the power shifts into the hands uh, so uh, the chief minister and con state council of ministers should resign this is what happened previously in case of karnataka yadurappa is the chief minister of karnataka so shivra singh chauhan is the chief minister of uh, you know madhya pradesh but in the initial stages of the election they were not in power congress was in power in the two states but because of loss uh, loss of no confidence motion so then the government has fell down and the other people so the present karnataka yadurappa came to the power so assembly can remove the chief minister and state council of ministers any time when when the chief minister and state council of ministers when they lose us the majority whenever they are losing the majority this people will be removed by the assembly so that means legislature is controlling the executive for suppose whatever the laws made by the state legislature whatever the laws made by the state legislature means in some states council may not be present in some states council may not be present as in some states the council is not present so assembly is considered as the state legislature this one i'll discuss when i discuss about the topic state legislature in some states where the council is not there then assembly itself is treated with the state legislature okay so but if they both are present the both should uh, pass a bill then only they can take the decision okay so what happens so whenever the state legislature so state legislature is nothing but we will call them as the law maker state legislature are simply called as the law makers state legislatures are simply called as the law makers so legislature so legislature so whenever they are making any law if the law is against the constitution then it can be striken down by whom high court this is what happening in andhra pradesh the high court have striken down the three capitals bill the high court has you know cancelled many number of laws made by the andhra pradesh government so andhra pradesh state legislature tried to or else they have passed many bills but high courts have created obstruction to many of the bills because so because legislature will be controlled by the judiciary if they are doing anything wrong similarly whenever chief minister and state council of minister they will be executing the laws made by the state legislature if anything is wrong that can be questioned by the high court so that is why there is a theory of separation of powers and checks and balances and one more thing which you people should keep in mind that is nothing but as in the previous case supreme court judges will be removed by the parliament appointed by the president but here high court judges are not appointed by the governor high court judges are not appointed by the state legislature sorry are not removed by the state legislature not appointed by the governor the 
judges of high court will also be appointed by the president only will be removed by the parliament only either state legislature or executive has no role or else they don't have any authority to involve in the provisions of the high court so that is why many times people will say that india is a federal state but india is not completely federal why because india the powers are little bit mostly tilted towards the center so how come or why the powers are tilted towards the center we will be discussing we will be learning about them in the further classes okay so but this is the theory of separation of powers so as i said india is a federal state the structure which will be existing at the level of center the structure which is existing at the level of center will also be same at the level of the state will also be same at the level of state so this is why you can relate that so so that is why so first of all we discussed why the parliament is a law making body similarly in the state who will be the law making body is nothing but the state legislature why because the representatives of people are present in the state legislature only that is why it is called as the law maker so these are the important foundational concepts which we have learnt so far so by keeping these things in mind you will understand very easily each and every concept and then finally and then finally i want you to explain i want you to learn about hierarchy that is existing in the political setup in our country so hierarchy in the political system of our country see guys sometimes you people most of the people uh, they know very less for suppose the people will be having a doubt what is that doubt there is an mla there is an mla to a state means uh, for suppose uh, just take a village so just take a village just take a village so if you take a village so to this village there will be a sarpanch there will be a sarpanch to this village yes or no yes each and every village will have a sarpanch so to this village there will be a ward member there will be a ward member present to this village so so somehow this village will be a, in a particular house in a village that will be under a particular ward member that will be under a particular sarpanch and this village will be under mptc this village will be under mptc so this word also most of you are very much familiar with and the village you know there is also a jptc in this village so this village under jptc this village is under mptc village is under sarpanch village is also under a ward member similarly this village is also under an assembly this means means ml so this village is also under an ml an ml this village is also under an mlc this village is also under so that mp of lok sabha mp of a rajya sabha so means why we need these many people so when sarpanch is there why do we require mptc when mptc is there why do we require jptc when jptc is there why do we require an mla when mla is there why do we require mlc when mlc is there why do we require a lok sabha mp when lok sabha mp is there why do we require a rajya sabha mp so this is the question i am just keeping in front of you i am just posing to you so just think about it for a few minutes okay did you thought of this did you got any idea now so in a small in a rough manner in a crude manner i'll explain you all these things so that you'll not forget this in your entire life in your entire in your whole life you will just keep these things in your mind and see i'm not going to explain all these things in a perfect manner in a rough manner because again we'll be having a time to discuss about all these things in a perfect manner okay and before that let me just confirm so in the syllabus we will be studying about the parliament in the future classes after completion of parliament 
will also complete the state legislature because parliament and state legislature one and the way same to each other then will go with the president then will complete the governor so then will complete the vice president also will complete the prime minister then will go with the chief minister will complete the state central council of ministers then will complete the state council of ministers then will complete the attorney general thereafter advocate general then will go with the supreme court and then we will also be discussing about the high court so after having a thorough knowledge on all these things then we will discuss you know preamble then we will discuss something called as a preamble so what is preamble etc thereafter we will also discuss fundamental rights thereafter we will also discuss fundamental rights so thereafter so after fundamental rights we will also be discussing about fundamental duties after this we will also discussing about directive principles of state policies thereafter we will be discussing about center and state relations so how come the relations between the center and the state is going to happen so how they are going to get modified or how they are going to get impacted so we will be studying after that so for writing this entire constitution there is a historical understanding like from the British era how this came into existence like there is a regulating act there is a Pitts India act thereafter charter acts thereafter government of India acts likewise there are various acts so this one will be considered as pre-constitutional regulations so we'll be studying about them then we will be studying about constitutional bodies okay constitutional bodies so what comes under this constitutional bodies then after this we will also be studying about non-constitutional bodies we will also be studying about what non constitutional bodies constitutional bodies and also non constitutional bodies so everything will be learning so everything will be learning then so uh, with this we will complete the syllabus okay so in this concept only we'll study about regionalism we'll study about political parties performance played by the various political parties we will also be going to study about judicial activism how active the judiciary is going to be so everything so this is the way we will be going to study the concept and see guys uh, generally people will think that uh, you know first of all the class should start with the preamble then after fundamental rights but my class is very unique my class is very different how how different is my class from the other aspects means i'll start my lecture with the parliament i'll start my lecture with the parliament so uh, this one i will also repeat again also why will i start my lecture with the parliament that is because so once if you understand this parliament state legislature everything you will understand the crux of the subject polity once if you get the crux of this subject polity the maturity you gained through these concepts will make you to learn this concepts also in a very perfect manner so this is what we discussed and the next thing so each and every village will be under this many people so why do we require these many people and what is the hierarchy so because a student who is preparing for competitive examinations need to know or need to have a clear understanding on this so how should or how will i create a clear understanding on this i'll explain you so the first thing the first thing is that so, uh, as i told you my class every time will be in a comparative manner okay so now take the family so now if you discuss or now if you go through the uh, family so for suppose in general in our family most of the times the decision will be taken by the father and that will be implemented by the father in general but let us take a family which is more democratic in nature which is more democratic in nature so how democratic so how democratic is this let us discuss so there is a family family so every time whatever the decisions that is required for this family so whatever the decisions that is required for this family the decisions will be made by this family members for suppose let's plan to go for a movie let's plan to go for a tour let's plan to go for something etc so everywhere whatever they are requiring whatever they are expecting so they will be decision means a uh, members to discuss there has to be members who will be discussing so there will be members who will be discussing 
So this members will be discussing. Next, as the members who should discuss means who should discuss means that is family members will discuss. Where will they discuss means for suppose one day they can sit here or there or in a, any place in a house. But regularly daily half an hour in a day they want to meet, they want to discuss, they want to chit chat in order to improve the relations. So for that they need a particular place as every day they want to sit. So for that they need a platform to discuss. They need a platform to discuss. What is the platform? The platform may be a balcony. The platform may be a hall. The platform may be a you know uh, you know bedroom or the platform may be a kitchen or open kitchen or where you people will be dining. So that may be a platform. So first of all, we need somebody to discuss about the issues and we need place. We need a place or platform to discuss regularly. And whatever the decision, whatever the thing we discuss, there has to be somebody who will finalize. So we need to finalize trade and there has to be somebody who should finalize that. So then finalize trade and kokalundal. So who are the people that will be finalizing? Generally father will be finalizing this. So who will be finalizing this means father. So father will finalize this. So there will be a family members, there will be a platform to discuss and the person should finalize. So by keeping this skeleton form, by keeping this structure, we'll connect this with every village. Uh, you know, we will connect with this village, we'll connect this with a district, we'll connect with this state and we'll connect with this with a uh, country also. Then you'll understand this. So, but the first thing you have to keep in mind is people to discuss, platform to discuss and there has to be somebody who need to finalize. So now let us go to a village one. Let us go to a village one. See, you relate. Again, I'm just keeping a reminder. After completion of this topic, which I'm explaining you, after completion of this, you just, you know, you just uh, compare, come back over here this video, watch this video after completion of panchayats and municipalities. After the completion of topic panchayats and municipalities, come back here and again listen to that, you will you'll get a very good idea. So there is a village one. So what is happening in this village one? So in this village one, there has to be somebody to discuss. In this village, there has to be somebody to discuss. So who will be discussing in this village? Who will be discussing in this village? So the people who will be discussing over is nothing but village voters. All the enrolled voters, all the registered voters in the village will discuss. Because uh, we need a street lights, we need a graveyard, we need a drainage system, we need a you know agricultural developmental issues, we need a MG NREGS scheme in our village. So we need a trees, we need to increase the number of trees density in this village etc. So, <coughs> excuse me, there has to be somebody who has to discuss, voters will be discussing that. Thereafter, village voters will be discussing, then after this, where will they sit and discuss, where will they sit and discuss? They will sit and discuss, for that they require a platform, for that they require a platform. What is the platform to discuss? That is nothing but Gram Panchayat. So, Grama Panchayat. Grama Panchayat is the platform where this registered voters will be present and discussing. Okay. So, the place where they will be discussing is Grama Panchayat and who will be discussing is all the registered voters. So, here itself, uh, this registered voters include ward members and that will also include Sarpanch. Everybody, they will be sitting and that is called as a Grama Sabha. We will discuss that in a later part and there is a Grama Panchayat. Then after what? So after this, there are village voters, Grama Panchayat platform. There will be somebody should finalize that one. Who will be finalizing that one? So that is Sarpanch. Sarpanch of the village. Sarpanch of the village will finalize this one. Sarpanch of the village will finalize. So these are the things which we need, you need to keep in mind. Discussion, platform and there has to be somebody who will be finalizing. Same like family, you can relate. So this is village one. So, within this village, the voters will discuss and they will sit in the Gram Panchayat while discussing and the issue will be finalized by the Sarpanch. Same, just go for the village too. Same manner, just go for the village too. So, here also, 
who will be the members who are going to discuss that is nothing but village voters so village voters the people who will be discussing over this is nothing but the voters in the village voters will be discussing and next where this village two people will be sitting and discussing gram panchayat so gram panchayat is the place where this village two people will be discussing and sitting and who will be the finalizing authority sarpanch sarpanch will be the finalizing authority sarpanch will be the finalizing authority so with respect to this village they will take the decision with respect to village one they will take the decision so this is fine but now remember the situation may arise where the issue may you know evolves between village one and village two the issue may start between this village one and village two so if it is related completely to village one they'll discuss and they'll settle it if it is related to complete village two they'll discuss and they'll settle it but if the issue is related to both village one and village two if the issue is related to both village one and village two what will they do so then so if the issue is related to village one and village two so both of them will come under a mandal both of them will come under a mandal isn't it or not so all the villages will be coming under the mandal so let's take mandal one so let's take mandal one so who will be discussing in this mandal the people from the village level to discuss at the man mandal there will be somebody will be calling them as a mptcs so mptcs will be present in the mandal one so there is means we have just taken the example of mandal one so the people who will be discussing the village level issues at the level of mandal is nothing but the mptcs mandal parishad territorial Con constituency and they will be sitting at a place they need a platform to discuss what is the platform to discuss that is nothing but mandal praja parishad so what is the platform to discuss that is nothing but mandal praja parishad mandal praja parishad is the platform where the people will be discussing next same like grama panchayat and ultimate decision maker means the people who enjoys majority support of the mptcs means if there are 50 mptcs anyone who gets the support of 26 mptcs will be called as a chairman so the finalizing will be done by the chairman so that is nothing but chairman of the mpp so we'll call him as the mpp chairman chairman of mpp this person will be finalizing so all the issues of the village at the mandal level will be discussed by the mptcs and here is the mpp chairman and just similar to this one there is a mandal two there is a mandal two so in this mandal two also to discuss the issues of mandal two in the mandal level there will be mptcs so where will they sit for the sitting as in case of family we require a hall or balcony in the village we require a grama panchayat in mandal level we require a mandal praja parishad similarly mandal 2 also we require mandal praja parishad so who will be the finalizing authority that is nothing but the chairman so some mandals may even contain up to 100 members so these mptcs uh, you know the majority of this mptcs so will be uh, you know uh, the person who enjoys the majority of this mptc will become the chair again i'm telling this is not the final this is a brief overview this is a crude or crux form i'm explaining so that you people may not get a doubt when i enter deeper into the concept so in order to make my students relaxly listen to my classes i am giving you enough amount of foundational classes okay so now just listen if the issue starts arising between mandal 1 and mandal 2 if it is related to completely mandal 1 they will resolve it if the issue is related to completely mandal 2 they will resolve it but if the issue is related to both so both of this mandals will be under a jilla both of these mandals are under what jilla both of these mandals are under a jilla so mandal level issues will be discussed at the jilla mandal level issues will be discussed at the jilla who will discuss that first one is nothing but the jptcs jptc jilla parishad territorial constituency so mandal level issues 
will be discussed at the Jilla level. By whom? That is nothing but by ZPTC, Jilla Parishad Territorial Constituency. So, where will they discuss? They will be discussed. For that, they require a platform that is nothing but the Jilla Praja Parishad. So, Jilla Praja Parishad is the platform where they will be discussing. And finally, and finally, so who will be the finalizing authority? That is nothing but the chairman. How come a person will become the chairman? This person will become the chairman when he enjoys the majority support of ZPTC. So when more, all the ZPTC, so chairman will be, who will become the chairman means he will also a ZPTC, but who enjoys the support of majority of the ZPTCs. So he is called as chairman of ZPP. So issues related to this Jilla 1 will be discussed completely by this people only. But now take Jilla 2. So just take the example of Zilla 2, District 2, Zilla 2. So what is happening over here? The people who will be participating or discussing over here is nothing but the ZPTCs. Okay, ZPTCs. Same like this one. So where will be they sit? They will be sitting Jilla Praja Parishad. And the final authority or decision maker is nothing but the chairman. Final authority or decision maker is nothing but the chairman. Final authority or decision maker is nothing but the chairman. So now my question is whenever the issue arises between these two districts, see within these districts they will resolve. Within this Jilla too they will resolve. But the issue is going to arise between these two districts. Then what will be the solution? Then what will be that solution? So that is this Jilla all the jillas will come under the state. All the jillas will come under the state. The issues of the district will be discussed at the state level. So where will they discuss? So who will discuss means MLAs. MLAs will discuss. Okay. MPTCs will discuss village level issues at the mandal. ZPTCs will discuss mandal level issues at the district. MLAs will dis uh, is discuss district level issues at the state so yes of course there is an mlc but to this extent just to limit yourself to the mlas because again if i say MLAs, mlcs again you will confuse just keep this next where will they sit and discuss they will sit and discuss at a place called as the assembly where will they sit and discuss they will sit and discuss in the assembly then who will be the final authority maker that is nothing but the chief minister who how come the chief minister will be made who enjoys the support of majority of the mls a person who enjoys the support of majority of mls will become what chief minister he will become the chief minister who enjoys the support of majority of mls he will become the chief minister next so this is the state one maybe just imagine as the telangana okay getting my point the state level issues with respect to this state completely internal matters of the state will be taken care exclusively by this people and next there is a state too and next there is a state too next there is a state too there is a state too what happens over here excuse me there will be MLS there will be MLS here also and where will they sit and discuss they will also sit and discuss in the assembly. They will also sit and discuss in the assembly. Who will be the final authority? The chief minister will be the final authority. Chief minister will be the final authority. So, these issues within this state will be completely resolved by them. This also completely resolved by them. But, if the issue arises between the states, so, these states will come under what? Center. The states will come under what? Center. They will be coming under center. So then what happens at the level of center? There has to be somebody to discuss. Them, we will call them as the MPs. We will call them as the MPs. Particularly Lok Sabha. I am just not taking the Raja Sabha. I am just taking the Raja Sabha. So where will they sit? They will be sit and discussing at a place called as a parliament. So as like assembly, so they will be sitting and discussing in the parliament. Particularly in the Lok Sabha. So MPs, they will be sitting where? In the Lok Sabha. The ultimate 
और फाइनल डिसीजन मेकर इज नथिंग बट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर द अल्टीमेट डिसीजन मेकर विल बी द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सो द हु विल बिकम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर द पर्सन हु एंजॉयज मेजोरिटी ऑफ द सपोर्ट फ्रॉम द एम पी द मेजोरिटी ऑफ द सपोर्ट फ्रॉम द एम पीस दैट टू फ्रॉम द लोकसभा विल बिकम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर द पर्सन हु एंजॉयज मेजोरिटी ऑफ द एम एल एस सो नॉट एम एल सीज एम एल एस विल बिकम वॉट चीफ मिनिस्टर सो ही बी दर अल्टीमेट अथॉरिटी मेकिंग इन द स्टेट एंड ही बी द अल्टीमेट अथॉरिटी मेकिंग इन द स्टेट सेंटर सो फॉर द एंटायर कंट्री सो दिस इज द क्लियर कट हायर आर की सो वॉट विल बी देर वॉट एक्सैक्टली विल बी देर सो सेम I am just a stick, or else stuck to only this point. Discussing members, place to discuss, and final authority making. So the same thing. I have connected to the villages. I have connected to the mandal. I have connected to the district. I have connected to the state and to the centre. So now you will not get any doubt. The why MLA is there, why MP is there, why MPTC is there, why JPTC. For suppose, if you are expecting, if you want, if you are expecting, uh, like. a government job at the level of a state or else if you are expecting chief minister relief fund if you are expecting chief minister relief fund where will you go if you are expecting chief minister relief fund you will be go to your nearest mla if you are expecting funds or else you are you know requesting funds from pmrf prime minister relief fund you will be visiting where to your nearest mp so if it is related to the center that will be uh, you know you can go to approach to the mp if it is related to the state you can approach to the uh, mla mla is more powerful in the state but mp is powerful with respect to the center so this is how this will be present for suppose see if we discuss what as i told you federal subjects federal means what will be under the state what will be under the state a uh, center so whatever the things that are under the state the state legislature will make the laws so whatever the things under the center center will make the laws so that is the scenario for suppose special category status who will grant the special category status center will grant for suppose if andhra pradesh is expecting special category status the mps of andhra pradesh will demand special category status in the parliament if telangana is expecting national level project in telangana or if it wants kaleshwaram project to be declared as the national project then telangana state will keep a demand it will uh, you know the cm of telangana will request all the mps or will order all the mps to demand in the parliament to uh, make the center to give special status to the kaleshwaram project so some demands will be fulfilled at the level of state some demands will be fulfilled at the level of center some demands will be fulfilled at the level of district mandal village so in order to speak about those issues in order to speak about those issues we need a separate representatives if we appoint same person to all the tasks then it will be very difficult to proceed so that is why we are having this much clear cut hierarchy if you understand this clear cut hierarchy then you will understand this subject polity in a perfect manner so with this so with this whatever the knowledge i gave you now you will get a very clear idea what you are going to study in the further classes so what exactly the structure of this subject polity so how whenever i discuss a particular topic i'll discuss you with you what kind of questions can be asked how the questions were asked previously so everything we are going to discuss so stay calm be relaxed keep trust on me and i'm challenging you or i am promising you that this classes will definitely make you to understand this subject in a polite in a perfect manner not only understanding this subject but it will also make you to fetch a very good amount of score so in the meanwhile so in the meanwhile in the midst of the classes every time i'll go on discussing some important aspects how you need to focus the polity how you need to go through the subject polity you can have an idea you can no take a note of those things okay there are many days to go many hours to go i will be with you and you can raise your doubts any time to me thank you guys thank you for watching thank you